Okay, welcome to this time lapse. As you can see, I painted the front page of Char the hot Charlie Hebdo newspaper that came out after the Charlie Hebdo massacre. I did that for several reasons. Uh, uh, the original files you find on my YouTube channel, a different YouTube channel, but I'm going to link to those two files in the description. And there's two files that last for about 10 hours each where I play the whole Quran in the background while I'm painting this to point uh, to the link between uh, scripture and actions of the terrorists, which is apparent if you actually read the Quran and the Hadith and, uh, and all the things. There's also uh, some lectures of, uh, one lecture of Ayan Ashi Ali uh, with uh, Sam Harris and also with my late hero Christopher Hitchens which sadly died in 2011 and that lecture is about free speech and this painting is also about free speech I made this because I'm an artist and free speech is basically the most important thing to me uh, it's more important to me it's so important to me that I'm actually willing to die for it I'm willing to put my neck out, out as they say, and uh, do this despite it might have some bad, bad consequences for me. Now, I did this painting in 2016 and I got some mm, bad messages on YouTube, but then my actually former channel was hacked in 2020 uh, like in january and uh, i but i reposted the files it's not in the best quality but they are out there so uh you can see them if you check in description or after this video uh when i i i do not mean to insult anyone that are believers in islam but I would like them to take a look at what I actually believe in, because I have been discussing Islam and religion in general with people for many years now. And one of the things that baffles me is that there is no more people that are more ignorant when it comes to religion than the re most of the religious. They don't read the scripture they tell me that believe, they believe in. And that is one of the reasons why these religions are actually kept alive. Now, of course, in Islam, uh, religion is way more entrenched into their culture now, uh, or in, into the whole justice system and the culture, so it's di more difficult to get rid of. And you don't really need that many people uh, to push this. Uh, for the silent majority not to take a stand and just go about their business and bring up their children and basically ignore uh, uh, scripture uh, but they are in a way enabler enablers to the extremists and the same goes for christianity or hindu nationalism or or the worst parts of buddhism uh, Shinto and all these things, you know, it's it's kind of if you if you as they say uh, for for bad people to do bad things that is natural, but to make a good man or good person do bad things you need religion, and that also goes for religion and ideology is basically the same mess, okay. It is based on belief, it is based on bias, it is based of a religion, is based on myth and ideology like communism and Nazism and fascism are often based on the same delusions. Uh, communism is a religion and you see that in how the communist or the extreme socialist act. Uh, they are acting like religious people. Actually, they are acting basically like the jihadists or the, or the most extreme Christians. The only difference is that they believe in different things. And the same thing goes for Nazism. Nazism was a religion. It had its, its own basis in, 
in myth and in some kind of mush between old Greek myth and you know the North things and the, actually the Waffen SS tried to create their own myth and their own religion. So you see this religious tendency go come back in the form of of ideology. That is why it's so important as a human being to be the most critical to your own beliefs and the only way to actually fight your own bias is to take in information and for me it is I take in an enormous amount of, of information every day. I listen to lectures of the most uh, intelligent people in the world. I, I read the books or listen to the audio books or, uh, of Christianity and I, I kind of try to get as a broad specter as I can. And I also uh, study science and, and all the things that can make me battle my own bias. We have to understand human beings are born, we aren't born good, we are born and our tendency to go for the old system, the reptile system as they say, is much greater than to evolve a deep introspection that makes you into a person who are actually really critical. And when you become critical, when you break down the notion of free will, you break down the notion of, uh, you have to realize that your personal bias is not objective reality. You know, you can, I mean, if you are basing your, your opinions on science and, and good information, you will, of course, come closer to an objective. There's a link between your objective opinions and and your subjective feelings. But there's always a threat there because this reptile, reptile brain will always try to fool you. That is why people get fat. That is why we turn into alcoholics. That is why people abuse their children. It is why we watch porn. It is why we are destroying the planet. It is why we are doing all kinds of things we shouldn't do. And then you have these beams of light, which is people like Christopher Hitchens, Sam Harris, Ayn Arshi Ali, uh, Carl Sagan, Elon Musk, and all the scientists of old, and all the Marcus Aurelius, uh, the greatest emperor of Rome that wrote uh, Meditations, which everybody should read. And you have people like Seneca and Epicurus. And, and all these people that are just beams of light in a pile of shit because there are more bad things happening than good. The only thing that we believe that things are fine is because we are living in the West and we are not confronted with the worst of humanity. Now, religion has led can give cover to do all these bad things. And that is the problem with religion in the first place. Now, Islam has in it uh, the problem directly ordering the sub submission or the enslavement or the killing of the kuffar or the mushrikun or the, the people who, who don't believe anymore. And you see that in the ongoing uh, civil war within Islam, which had lasted for like 1300 years now. Uh, it has to be said that Muhammad probably never existed, but because you can't really find him in real history, like Jesus, he is not really there. And it's all based on myth. It is uh, is uh, books that have been created from uh, actually Islam came into existence almost two hundred years after Muhammad was supposed to have lived, and you can't find Muhammad in real history. So it's probably only based on myth, and that's a good thing, at least because he did actually have sex with a nine-year-old girl, and he didn't fly on a on a bevinged horse to from uh, Medina to the mountaintop in Jerusalem. It just did not happen. And that is a good thing. And Jesus also did not happen. 
but people, people's bias make them extremely irrational and they do believe in irrational things. Now, for me, this is about free speech. It is about the threat from the religious against free speech. And I, I, I say it all the time. If you gave power back to, to the Christians, they would do exactly the same with free speech as the, the Islamists want to do. So there, there is no different. The, the witch burnings and the, and the pogroms and the, and the killing of the Jews would start again. Uh, and uh, it would just take... 10 years or something like that and we would be back to the maybe a little bit longer but it wouldn't take long before we, we were back to the basically middle ages in the kind of society because the books tell you this the books tells you this even christianity is just a backward uh, religion that should be thrown on a heap of of uh, trash heap of humanity history we should read it because it's important to understand it but we should shouldn't follow it what you should follow is epicurus and all the humanists and science and reason and battle your own bias as i say and uh, don't be an asshole basically here you can actually see i'm cutting out from from uh, paper and uh, I'm spraying it in to my painting. Uh, actually, when I did this, I noticed that some of the spray paint was splashing on the painting. It was red and I thought, shit, this is going to cost me my life. But, you know, I'm an artist. I'm a free speech absolutist. And I want uh, and I'm willing to make some sacrifices for free speech. And that is what I did here. And I hope you actually enjoy it and uh, hope you go and watch the, at least in part, the original files. There are also talk about the painting and why I painted it. So uh, with this, I hope to, you do that. And I hope to, if you would like to support my work, you can actually go to Patreon. There is a link in the description and sign up for a dollar or five. I also have a Patreon giveaway every month, a small painting, so you can get your hands on that if you sign up. And if you want me to learn how to paint, you can go to my other YouTube channel, and I see you in the next video.